Hey everyone, so in this video we are looking at advanced camera settings and audio settings for Video Ninja, how to change things like white balance, but also how to allow a director to remotely change a camera device or audio device of a guest remotely. So to start, we're going to go to Video Ninja. Um, we're on slash alpha as well. That is the nightly version of the app, so I update that normally every night with the newest code uh, and it has all the new features but it might be also the most buggy version. Anyways, uh, I'll be using that here. Uh, we're gonna do a simple start, uh, simple push-pull setup, and we're gonna select our Logitech webcam as an option. Now we are choosing the webcam because webcams and Android phones tend to give us lots of camera settings to play with. An iPhone or a Cam Link, for example, will give us very little, if any, advanced camera settings. Uh, but an Android or a webcam will give lots of settings. Logitech in particular is pretty good. So we'll do that here. Um, so yeah, we can change the camera up as normal in, in the menu. This little button lets us restart the camera if it gets jammed. If you have like a cam link and it sometimes freezes on you, you can reload it. And this lets us just change the um, the publishing width and height uh, to some standard def defaults. Uh, audio settings, again, same idea. One trick is you can hold control and you can actually select multiple devices. All right, so Video Ninja will mix all the audio and video together into, into one media stream. So uh, this is kind of like a built-in mixer. If you click on the audio tab, we'll see that we have options for both Logitech and the CamLink audio settings, but the audio will get mixed into a single stream after. But uh, yeah, we'll just go there. And now we have settings for just one. Uh, reviewing the settings, audio gain, you might want to disable if you are using something like a Blue Yeti microphone. Those tend to have a kind of uh, aggressive auto gain. So by disabling that, uh, you can rely on the manual gain instead. Uh, but for most people, you might want to leave it on true. Echo cancellation, you might get better audio quality if you turn that off. However, uh, for most users, it's safer to keep it on. It's going to help prevent feedback and having uh, noise generated from the Video Ninja tab being picked up um, and fed back, uh, but turning it off, you get, you get better audio quality, but I would recommend you have headphones if you turn that off. Noise suppression, same idea. Um, turn it off, you might get better audio quality, except if you have a loud fan in your room, it could be a problem. If you are choosing to use like NVIDIA's broadcast, uh, tool that has noise cancellation, you might not want to use this, uh, noise suppression on top of it. So you might want to disable it there. Uh, those settings can also be uh, uh, set via the, the URL. So AG equals zero. We'll turn off auto gain on, on start. But you can always toggle it later here again to change it. For video settings, um, every camera is different. This is really just dumping all the camera driver settings in a menu for you. Like... Um, these are titled and they behave as the camera driver provides. So if something is a little bit odd with these settings, that's normally a camera specific or driver specific sort of thing. For example, if I try to change the white balance, uh, the color temperature, it, it's stuck at 4,500 and it won't let me change it. However, if I go um, down here and change white balance mode to manual, I can then change it all day long. And I can always go back and set it back to continuous if I want it to be automatic. Um, you'd think by changing it, it would automatically switch. Um, I might have to make it automatically switched from continuous to manual but the driver does not do that currently. So in the future, I'm, I might 
tweak it so that it, you change color temperature, it automatically disables, disables this. But for now, uh, you need to manually toggle this uh, for it to kick in. Uh, that's a camera uh, driver setting. Up. Contrast, pretty straightforward, nothing there. Exposure compensation. Um, if you want to change the exposure, you'll have to, again, change to manual. And you can always go back to continuous to have it automatic. Same thing with focus. If you want to change the focus, you can change it to manual. Or back to continuous. Uh, smartphones might act a little bit differently than um, a desktop or a webcam. Something to be aware of. Uh, frame rate. You can often go higher than the frame rate um, that you start with. Same with lower. So if you find you have some CPU issues not keeping up, you can always lower the frame rate down to 25, 30. If you're publishing at 60, it might be a little too hard on your CPU because you're encoding twice as many frames. So um, you might find changing the frame rate could help. Uh, if you are screen sharing and you want to um, uh, set a higher max frame rate, you can say frame rate equals 30, let's say, to start with frame rate, and max frame rate equals 60. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but with uh, the browser, I noticed that if you start screen sharing at, let's say, 30 frames a second, the highest frame rate uh, the slider will let you adjust to is what you have started the screen share with. But if you say max frame rate equals 60, I actually start uh, the stream at 60 frames, and then a split second later, lower it down to 30 frames. That way you have the option to go up to 60. Um, I don't do that by default for everyone because it can cause uh, potential conflicts with certain browsers or systems might find it unstable. Uh, or it's just not a default behavior. So I, I make that as a um, advanced option if you need it. Uh, things like width and height, a little bit tricky here. Um, if you change the, the height, right, it's going to change the height, but the width stays constant if possible. Now you can get around that by um, holding control and then changing the width or height. What I do in that case is I take the current aspect ratio and I apply it along with the width value you're requesting. And so the camera technically should then update the height to be correct. I don't, I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but um. Hold control if you want to change width and height and you don't want to crop it. You want to have a, a consistent aspect ratio. Uh, yeah, now if you make a, if you make changes and you're not happy with them, uh, there is a button at the bottom here. Uh, it will let you revert back to defaults. Now be aware, it does not always work. Um, simple changes will work. Uh, but advanced changes, sometimes the camera will throw an error saying something that you try to revert back is invalid. Um, I'll have to keep polishing that code. But just so you're aware, if you change something like saturation, right, and you restart the browser, and you rejoin the webcam, um, that old saturation value is maintained, right? Um, now I, I do store the settings, so like 26. I then know you made a change and I'll allow you to revert. But some of the more advanced settings like exposure, manual, things like that, um, the camera does not easily let me revert back as you would expect. It throws an error if I try to revert too much back at once. Um, so just, just be aware that these settings are persistent in a lot of ways. You have to open up the camera driver to revert settings. 
um, and I don't have an official re revert to camera driver default. So I have a little cookie, I'm not a cookie, like a little lo local storage uh, setting on the browser that keeps track of the settings you make. So if you do want to revert, it will try to revert back to those original settings. If you have a guest and you change these settings, the guest might find if they open up Zoom later, that they have to come back to Video Ninja, hit reset for those settings to um, revert. Otherwise, they might persist elsewhere. That's the limitation of, of browsers and the camera drivers at moments. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep working on those issues. So hopefully, the revert button will work more consistently in the future. Now, uh, we also have um, the option to do pan, tilt, and zoom. So PTZ, we add that to the URL, and it will then ask the user if they want to allow the browser to be able to move the camera. Uh, so zoom, pan, and tilt. Now, if we go to video settings, we'll see that we have tilt, zoom, and pan as options, All right? Kind of nice, we can change the zoom. On an Android, uh, I don't think you need to have pan tilt zoom. I think with an Android, zoom is already enabled by default. But with many webcams on PC, you need to um, give permissions first. And I don't ask for those permissions initially because they are a, an additional prompt. And if a user denies them, then you can ask for them later very easily. But once you do get the permissions uh, for Pantip, for PTZ, um, the browser remembers it, right? Camera use and movement, and it will persist without needing to re-ask. If a user does deny permissions, you'll have to get them to reset um, the, the, the settings here, and then reload their browser. And then it will ask for all the permissions again. Okay. Uh, now, as a director, let's let's go back and show you how to change a camera remotely. Um, so I'm going to actually let me just show you that. There's a little new thing like this is, on Alpha, for example. There's a new button that lets you have a random room name. Um, that's not yet on production. Anyways, we can add this, join as a guest. Now, as a guest, you'll notice that the guest has no control over these settings. Because they're a guest, uh, they have very limited options. Okay. Now, as a director, if you go to additional controls, you have all the options right? So we can remotely change echo cancellation, we can remotely change the audio device, etc. So let's say that they joined the wrong microphone. I can select the right microphone and then hit request. For privacy reasons, it will ask the guest, the director wants to change your audio device, and they can say yes. Right? And you can request every time you want to change the device. If you already have a device um, kind of selected, video devices in particular, um, you know, once you request and get the device, there's a refresh button instead, and you can just refresh it without asking for permissions. So if again, they have a cam link and it freezes, you can hit refresh without having to ask for permissions. So only if you're changing um, the camera um, that it will ask for those permissions. Okay. Now, if that is problematic, and I can understand that um, as a director, you might want to have more control, um, you have to get permissions up front. And so there's an option called consent. You add that to the URL of the guest. Um, so when they join the room, 
and they join the stream, it will give them a prompt saying privacy warning, the director will be able to remotely change your camera and microphone. So this way there's a notification, um, a prompt ahead of time. And once they accept that, the director can then uh, change the camera and mic without any further permissions. Uh, my camera can use. There we go. We can also change things like uh, brightness. It's too bright, so let's darken it. We can um, change focus, frame rate, resolution, all that. Hold control, change the width and height. Uh, that works too. So I can increase the resolution or decrease the resolution as needed. Um, so if a guest is has if a guest has a lot of CPU issues, you could hold control and lower their width and height down. That way you can lower the resolution. You can also lower the frame rate. So the frame rate's lower. That will help with remotely uh, reducing the CPU load on those guests because you're making the capture resolution and the frame rate less intense. Okay. With audio settings, it's again, same idea. If they have multiple audio device, devices, you'll see them all listed here. Uh, gain is moved up here rather than there because it's a primary function. Um, so if, if the guess is too loud, you can still change the gain here. And if you want to revert back to 100%, you can just double click that slider. And in this slider, you can revert back to the default automatically there. Uh, there is no... Um, restart to default really with um, currently with the, with the director mode. So if you make changes here, the, there isn't a, a button to really refresh to defaults currently. Um, something that I can always add down in the future, but just be aware that if you make changes to these video settings, they might persist on that uh, guest's side after they leave. So I wouldn't want to be too extreme with this. Otherwise, the guests might need to um, undo, uh, uh, come back to Video Ninja to reset it or um, use another app that clears it or restart the drivers um, using something like maybe OBS. You can refresh the drivers to camera defaults there. Uh, anyways. Those are some of the options, guys. Um, I hope that helps. If you have any future requests, any uh, feedback, I'm on Discord at discord.video.ninja. Um, before I go, one last thing to mention, that is um, uh, if you are a um, a publisher on a phone, so let's say you're on a phone, I'll join, and you have the ability to do zoom. You can zoom directly from the the app by um, uh, essentially using your thumb to scroll, uh, to scroll up and down on the screen. So let's see, I had now. Uh, it also works with the browser, so here we go, right? Um, I'm holding on the screen and I'm zooming in and out. So the same effect applies um, on Android. So if you're on Android, you can use your thumb or whatever to rub up and down the screen to zoom in and out. Uh, just, uh, it's one of those key actions I think you might want. Um, you also get the option via here if you want fine grain control. And over time, I'll, I'll improve that interface for the mobile experience so you get more of the key functionality up front. Um, anyways, that's currently Video Ninja and those advanced settings. Okay. Um, yep, hit me up on Discord if you have questions, and I'll talk to you all later.